What's up everybody? Today we got something I think is pretty damn cool. Recently a company, uh, J... Oh geez, I'm, I'm gonna screw that up the whole time. JLCPCB, PCB, not like PCP, PCB. Yeah, that'd be bad. PCP. Uh, this is a uh, gallon of PCP. Wow! A, a gallon? Yes. Yeah. So recently, JLCPCB, that's a rough one, reached out and asked if I wanted to review any of their service offerings. Now, I get this from time to time from other 3D printing companies, and you know, it's kind of like if they only offer SLA and FDM, it's not really exciting to me because, you know, I can do that already. But JCL. JLC, oh, bro, it's brutal, uh, has something that I've wanted to look at for a very long time, and that is metal 3D printing. So I cooked up a quick open pour worm mold and shot it off to them, and I just got it in the mail, and we're gonna open it up for the first time together. Check it out. You gotta have a cool knife. This is not a cool knife. <laughs> so they're out of Hong Kong, China. But um, I got it really fast. Their process is super easy. Their web UI is really easy to use. You, you just export your file. In my case, I sent them a uh, step file. For those that don't know, step is kind of like the PDF of the 3D CAD world. Uh, you know, anything can import it and kind of go crazy. And it's generally higher quality than uh, like an STL or a mesh file. So I just uploaded that. Um, I waited for their response for their quotes seemed like a good deal to me. I think it was a roughly $65 for what we're about to take a look at here. And uh, that included shipping. So, um, you know, they gave me a coupon for that, so I didn't have to pay. But even if I had to pay, 65 bucks isn't too bad. So I really want to try the metal 3D printing because it's a technology that is not really readily available to the home consumer. And that's really because of the process involved. The printing process is relatively straightforward. It's the post-processing that's kind of a pain. So the way it works is, you know, they take metal powder and it's kind of suspended in um, a substrate or another material. Uh, I don't even know what that is. Like, I, I always think about it as like wax, but it's not wax. And so uh, they go as a printing and it's lasered into place. And then you get the part off and then you have to do what's called sintering, which is putting it into a big oven at a certain temperature for a certain amount of time. And it kind of melts away all of that binding material. And I think it might even melt the metal into place. I don't think so, it doesn't get that hot, but it's at a high enough temperature that, you know, home users can't really deal with that. And you get a solid metal part. Now there's some shrinkage in there when, uh, from where you print it, where your file will be and what the end product will be that you have to compensate for. I didn't, this is a super simple open pour worm mold. I just, you know, uploaded it and sent it on its merry way. So let's see, I haven't seen this either. I promise, you saw me break the seal bro. And this is pretty small. I think they have um, their dimensions that they can do are, um, not like giant, so you can't do like a giant multi-cavity mold. And by the way, this material is steel, not aluminum, which should in theory last longer. It's super heavy, bro. It's crazy. Wow, it looks cool. <laughs> wow, man, that is, that is really awesome. I think they printed it solid. Like, um, so when I uploaded this model, um, I didn't hollow it uh, because in Fusion that's just asking for trouble basically. But when I uploaded it, I said, hey, if you want to hollow it out, like, you know, you can hollow it. It doesn't need to be printed solid. And I mean, it sounds pretty damn solid, dude. That's cool. So one of the other things you'll notice on this is the finishes are not like mirror finishes or anything. Um, again, because of the technology they use, it's basically laying little pebbles of material down and then it's centered. Like some of these are very smooth. This top layer here is not, and I think that's just a part of the process, right? So I knew going in that I most likely get a matte uh, finish on my lure. And um, 
I certainly think I will. And the one thing I did to this mold that's a little bit different is, you can see in this section right here, I have an undercut. Now, if you were seeing, seeing a mold, an undercut would, you know, it would cause problems, uh, certainly increase the cost dramatically because if it's, if it's a flat non undercut mold, it's a three axis machine, three, <laughs> three axis machine. And uh, if you have undercuts like this, then you're talking about uh, a five axis machine. And that machine is way more expensive than a three axis machine. Thus it's going to cost you more to machine that mold. Um, even if you could like this, this is pretty gnarly right here. I didn't realize I made it that gnarly, but that's one of the reasons I want to try this 3d printing technique because you can do this kind of undercuts without really any problem. Came out great. So let's see how it pours, man. I'm super excited. I can't believe it's solid, dude. Like, listen to this. Dude. Oh, I do have a scale here because uh, I was mixing some silicone for another cool project coming up. Let's just see how much this bad boy weighs. Wow, seven ounces, that's nuts. Let's see if I can compare that to, um, let's see what I got over here. This is a, a mold that I machined. This is the Tattler, fantastic bluegill lure, by the way. Obviously it's multi-cavity, way bigger. And it weighs two pounds, 12 ounces. So this little guy weighs a third of this big old boy. If I'm doing my math right. If I'm not, someone will correct me in the comments. That's nuts, man. I mean, this thing, I mean, it's crazy solid, bro. Let's see, what do I got over here? Ooh, I got some guacamole. I'm just gonna reheat this real quick and do an open pour. I hate open pours. I have a, a bum shoulder. My right shoulder is basically trashed from multiple dislocations from skateboarding and soccer goalkeeping. And now that I'm old, it's one of those gimpy shoulders. Look at that. Steady as a rock. Yeah, but I shoot with this hand. But <laughs> I think I can pour one. Let's do this. This is, um, this is a color called Dawn Patrol. If we're going to do a worm, we should make it a cool color, right? Not the guacamole isn't cool, but like purple is kind of a standard cool worm color. This is my take on the classic morning dawn. I call it Dawn Patrol. It's a little more solid. All right. I think this looks pretty good from a pouring standpoint. Ooh. We're a little bubbly, but bro, it ain't gonna really impact much on whether this is a good idea for mold or not. Bro, I'm like a pro now. <laughs> Not. Let's let that cool down and we'll be right back. I'm gonna do something dumb. I'm gonna touch it and see if it's hot. Yeah, I'm that guy. It's not really that hot which I think is not a great sign because, um, you know, your aluminum molds, aluminum is, I don't know if it's the undisputed champion of heat dispos, dispos getting the heat out, but um, it's pretty close, right? Like from like common materials, aluminum wicks heat insanely fast. So what that does, that pulls the heat out of your plastic into the aluminum, thus your plastic cools faster and you can get a lot more shots. Uh, the fact that this is not that hot um, means that, that that heat is um, trapped, if you will, inside the plastic and has to kind of naturally kind of cool itself out. Yeah, touch up the back here. This is, again, probably where I'll screw up, but back is not quite all the way to the top. Woo! All right, that's not so good. I'm gonna have a little squirrelies on there. It's cool, the bass won't care. 
should probably see if I can shoot some free fall fry real quick. And I just realized this will give us a, a really good kind of comparison between the free fall fry, free fall fry, <laughs> the triple F mold that I got done at Proto Labs before I even really knew how to design a mold. Um, so the finishes are off. There's a lot of problems with it, but kind of a standard finish Proto Lab mold and this 3D printer mold. That's silicone, by the way, not blood. All right, I think this bad boy is done. I didn't quite get it filled all the way. It actually looks like we've got a lot of shrinkage here, but we're demolding super easily. Boom. So like I thought, we have a very interesting finish. See, this is why I suck at the pouring, hand pouring. <laughs> so you have a very like matte pebbled finish, which I think is, you know, pretty cool. I know a lot of tournament guys I talk to, Sometimes they'll rough uh, up lures to look different, uh, but yeah, dude, I mean, it pulled right out. It was totally cool. There might be some um, extra debris, if you will, in that mold cavity from when they um, sent it over. So let's try to pour one more because I, I think I can do a little bit better than that. Probably not, but I think I can. I'm just going to grab this other puck I have sitting over here. This is a uh, blue shed. Again, should make a pretty cool color. So the problem when uh, you know, you're doing like remelts and stuff is you will get like the coolest color ever and you'll have no idea how to reproduce it. In this case, I will though because I'm recording. So it'll be blue shad plus morning dawn equals maybe greatness. All right, guys, we got piping hot plastic. Let's pour it again. See if I can get a little bit better pour this time. I'm gonna just dump and um, not try to be too fancy with it. See if I can get it just to fill. better about that as a person all right let's open up the free fall fry here so we can compare this color is ridiculously cool dude I will um, have a video on it shortly with the recipe and everything so hit that subscribe button if you want to see it because I love the um, the blue kind of just shimmer it has. It's, I think that's like the coolest thing ever. So you can see this is um, relatively shiny, right? Not as shiny as you would get from, I would say, um, someone who knew what they were doing. Again, I sent this off to Proto Labs. They had one of their contractors make it. Um, I didn't even know what to specify as far as finish. So I, I think I just said like leave tool marks. So it just kind of, it is what it is, right? But even with all that said, it still produces a shiny bait. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in the mold here. You can see there's like uh, these lines inside there. They're very small. They don't really impact much, but I think they actually make the bait look a little cooler, personally. And there we go. There's those, and here's the first pour out of that mold. So you can see it's very much pebbled finish again which you know I think is certainly unique probably pretty cool all right let's see if this one's any different I don't expect it will be Boop. it's getting a bit warmer now Go. 
I noticed this line before and I was a little bit confused on what it was, but it's, it's actually this ridge here in the mold. Like underneath it, it's, it's really thin, or really um, slick, I guess. So it makes a nice shiny lure, which is interesting. Now I do believe, I will verify this and um, put the info down here. I do believe they will finish this for you uh, if you don't want this rough textured finish. I'll confirm with them and um, flash that info down here below. But um, I do know they do anodizing, so you could get it anodized if you wanted to make it slick. But um, this is pretty cool, bro. I'm gonna totally fish this thing tomorrow. So what are my conclusions? JLC PCB. Don't like the name, bro. I can't say that at all. Uh, fantastic product, fantastic service. Like I said, the uploading of the product, getting the quote, super duper easy. The shipping was fast. And I know I didn't get any special treatment because the person I was talking to kind of on the marketing side didn't even know I had ordered um, by the time my thing had already shipped. So this is kind of the, the people in the manufacturing side had no idea what was going on, which I think is pretty cool. So what would I use this for? I don't think I would use it for like production molds, even open pore molds, um, if they are kind of your standard run of the mill stuff. But if you have a design that requires like a lot of undercuts, a lot of overlap, uh, any sort of weird geometry that is extremely difficult to machine or expensive to machine like this is definitely the way to go right and again i think we can polish this we could anodize this if we wanted to get that super super shiny finish that's not going to be a problem heck it might even wear into that finish oh i got one more thing here that i want to check it is not magnetic so i think this is um, stainless steel not just steel it's stainless steel so it's going to last friggin' forever, probably. So conclusion, yes, I would totally use this again for any metal part that I wanted to produce. You know, these things get cheaper the more you buy. This was 60 bucks, certainly a working mold. Fantastic. I bet if I would order 100 of them, it would be on a per unit price would be a lot cheaper. So there's a link below with a coupon code that you can use to get a discount on your first order. You know, and if you want, um, if you have a, a mold design in, um, that you want 3D printed in resin, you know, absolutely these people can do it as well. And um, you can get your molds done that way. Take care guys, tight lines.